We tested programmatic TV for Columbia in spring of 16 and then used it again in fall of 16. And we were able to target more effectively in minimizing the waste that TV historically has and ultimately able to show success of our efforts, not just in brand lift, which is where his TV has historically been used, but also in product engagement. We were able to buy high quality programming at a very efficient cost, targeting only those households that are outdoor enthusiasts where weather is happening, and uh, who had recently visited a key retail of our, retailer of ours. And we were able to show an increase of over 30% to product page visits directly attributed to the TV advertising. So historically, Columbia has used TV. It's been something that we've used. It's really been a part of our brand DNA for, for many years, actually many decades. What programmatic TV allowed us to do was just be a little more, like Susan talked about, a little more efficient with our buy. So we've seen a ton of success in broadcast and in linear TV, but as we've looked to making our budgets more efficient and more effective, we started testing programmatic in spring of 2016, continued it in fall of 16 with honestly just continuing those progressive results. So we saw greater efficiency, we saw better targeting, and we really saw a lot of benefits in being able to sort of execute the TV buy more effectively. We have a performance marketing team who has an in-depth knowledge of all of the addressable targeting mechanisms that we have, whether it's digital or TV, and the best partners to get us there. That team worked closely with potential partners, including DataZoo, TubeMogul, and others who are playing in this space, Wide Orbit, to find the best partner to do what we needed to do, which is to navigate this landscape that is still very much a work in progress in order to get a buy that would be effective for Columbia in that premium programming while also driving sales. We were able to reach a national um, audience, so historically we haven't been able to reach uh, national audiences. So with our buy on linear previously because of the expense, honestly, we were just able to go into local markets. So with programmatic, we were able to layer on a national buy. Uh, that also let us target not only nationally but our core consumers, so outdoor enthusiasts in particular. We also were able to layer on weather targeting and ultimately, like Susan talked about, we saw that on the back end in terms of results. So we saw increases to our page views on our e-commerce site, which we use as a proxy for consideration. So in spring we saw incremental lift on people searching for rain jackets as a result of the campaign. Um, and in winter, the same thing. So really seeing those results on the back end was pretty telltale in terms of that performance and our ability to continue executing like that. The biggest learning is our ability to target and be more efficient. I think some of the things that we saw that we'd like to continue to test was the ability to um, hopefully do some sequential targeting. So while we just had really one or two TV spots in market at a time, what we'd like to start using is using programmatic to deliver that consistent story. So I'd say we learned that there's opportunity for us to continue that story there, not just having one sort of primary creative asset, but really using that targeting to, to do sequential messaging. Ultimately, I think with, with this kind of learning, it, it contributes to a conversation around where we put those dollars. I hope budgets are growing, but even if they don't, what we'll end up seeing, as we've seen in the last few seasons, is a larger majority of that budget going to programmatic because we can literally prove out that it works. Whereas, again, as Susan mentioned, prior and in traditional uh, TV methods, we're just really looking at brand lift. Now we're looking at brand lift, category interest, product interest, purchase, I mean, essentially all the way down to purchases where we haven't been able to in the past. So hopefully the dollars will follow that. Ultimately, I think the success that we've seen is important for the industry. I mean, I think what we want to see is further developments with respect to measurement. Um, I think that's one of the things that we continue to strive for. So as a client advocate, that would be something that, you know, I'll continue to advocate for. We've used partners like DataZoo to help to help shore that up, the measurement piece. And then I think ultimately, I, I feel proud that Columbia's been on the front end of some of this technology. So I think it's it's good for us as a brand. I'm, I'm here, I enjoy hearing the different conversations that people are having about what might happen in the future or what they're seeing happen now. 
and what other brands are doing. And I think it is it is good to share our stories so that people can see that this is not a philosophical someday maybe possibly it will work. We have seen it work better and better for us season over season. And it's important to have a group like this. To me, one of the biggest challenges is inventory control. Measurement is terrific, and I look forward to seeing that continue to evolve. But as we saw, we, we, we over-delivered significantly, which is a good thing. You always love getting more than you paid for. But with better inventory management, we can better manage where we're spending our dollars so that we're not overspending in a medium that doesn't, it wasn't our intention. So inventory control, measurement, um, and just more learning on how it can evolve.